You know, I don't believe I ever asked your feelings about this war. On the surface, it must seem as though we took Fodlin's fragile piece in our hand and shattered it into a thousand pieces. What? Is it deep conversation time now? Where'd that come from? It's merely that we've never discussed the matter, and you are in a fairly unique position amidst this all. I thought you might be able to provide some perspective on how an outsider views the actions Adrestia has taken. I don't know. Don't think I really feel too strongly one way or the other. You have nothing to say. Nothing at all? That's how it goes when you're a merc. War? Peace? Doesn't matter. My job's the same either way. It's just money in, blade out. All there is to it. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. It's like you said, I'm in a unique position here. Meaning you would have answered differently were you not a mercenary. Uh, yeah. If I was a farmer, for example, I'd be hounding you day and night to end the war. Sure, you say you're gonna bring this bright and beautiful future, but am I really gonna suffer for years, maybe even decades, waiting for it? The stuff you're doing now, enlisting my farmhands, trampling my fields, destroying my crops, just doesn't make it worth the wait. But you know the toll it's taking on your people, yet you choose to press on with the war anyway. So you've got to have a good reason, right? Yes, of course. You certainly don't mince words. Is it the years of mercenary work that made you this way, or have you always been like this? Pretty sure it's who I am. It was just me and my mom growing up, you see. We lived in a village, but for whatever reason, she liked to keep to herself. So, I guess it rubbed off on me. I learned pretty quick not to get attached. Is that so? I would be interested to hear more. Trust me, it's not as interesting as it sounds. Who says it has to be? Interesting or not, I'll have you tell me one of these days. If you say so, just promise not to freak out when you realize how boring I am, okay? Do I seem like the type of person to freak out about such a thing? <sighs> Perhaps don't answer that. Well, there's a face I'm not used to seeing on the training grounds. Something wrong, Hubert? I have merely come to examine the equipment. I hear whispers that it is in quite the state. Further, my being here should come as no surprise. Her Majesty and I train in these grounds often. No kidding? I don't think I've ever seen you two around here. Naturally. We tend to pick times that allow us to avoid a crowd. In any case, if you do desire a session with either myself or Her Majesty, you only need ask. A mercenary with no backing such as yourself has much to gain by earning Lady Edelgard's favor. Of course, we would not be without benefit. Your rise in standing would paint an ideal picture for our people. How do you mean? Many commoners crave progress, a path upward in life, and your example would prove that path exists. The common folk would never expect to see their emperor train alongside someone of your dubious origins. At least not outside the pages of a fairy tale. Dubious origins? <laughs> a little harsh, don't you think? Still, it doesn't sound too bad if I can use that to help lift people up. On the other hand, your presence would also cause great turmoil amongst the elites of our society. They may even despise you. A symbol of the ungrateful commoner, granted privilege well beyond their station. 
Oof. But hey, Dorothea's a commoner too. Why don't they hate her? Dorothea is a famed former songstress, well esteemed in the upper echelons of society. Your situation is vastly different. Right. Well, no point worrying about it if it's gonna happen no matter what. Precisely. Things may yet change in the years ahead. But for now, all we can do is live with it. So coddling the elites means the commoners end up oppressed, while hoisting commoners up only agitates the elites. Glad I'm not the one who has to rule the Empire. This whole thing sounds like a total mess. <laughs> a mess, indeed. Ah, fiery as ever. What an inspiring sight. Oh, hey, Ferdinand. You think so? The way I see it, a mercenary who doesn't train every day probably won't stay a merc for long. Hmm. I cannot dispute your logic. Though, I must say, you never did strike me as a typical mercenary. And your upward trajectory has proven me right. To go from nothing to a commander rivaling even the finest of nobles as quickly as you have is astounding. You are the most intriguing woman. Well, that's because I've made a habit of giving my all. I'm honestly just happy to have earned Edelgard's respect. You're all, you say? Something wrong? To the contrary, I find your attitude inspirational. We are birds of a feather, you and I. Every task I undertake must also be done to utmost perfection. Polishing my armor? It shall have a mirror sheen. Cooking a meal? Let not even a single ingredient go to waste. True nobility means surmounting any challenge before you with no less than every fiber of your being. Uh, that's taking it a little far, don't you think? Maybe you're not wasting food, but what about your time and energy? And I'm not any sort of noble, you know. I am a guest! Are you suggesting that devoting myself fully to every endeavor is wasteful? I mean, yeah. If you put your all into every little thing, you'll run out of stamina right when you need it most. You're like the knight in that proverb. The one who spends all day building a fence around his pegasus, only for it to fly away. Valuable advice for a pegasus, perhaps. But I am no beast. I am Ferdinand von Eyer. I know that you're different. I do. But everyone needs to take it easy sometimes. If you always keep your bowstring taut, it's just gonna snap when you actually need to fire. I assure you, I am no bowstring either. But I take your point. However, there is no cause for concern. As I have told you on multiple occasions, I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Whether I am resting, enjoying leisurely pursuits, or simply in contemplation, I always apply all my energy to the task at hand. At work, or at rest, I will forever give it my all. <laughs> Seriously? What's full-on resting even look like? Oh hey, looks like I'm not the first one to show up. Hello there. No need to pay me any mind. I'll just be absorbed in my book here. I assume you've come to meet someone? As they've clearly not arrived yet, why don't you join me? Here. I, uh... Thanks. Hey, Linhart, you're into all that spooky magic stuff, right? Like sorcery and crests and whatnot? Yes. Why? Is there something you'd like to ask me? 
Oh no, I was just thinking it's kind of weird that you've never really been interested in my power. Do you want me to be? Yeah, I mean, I don't even understand it myself. But with you helping me, I might actually learn something. Pat and Hubert scared me half to death talking about how you might experiment on me. Just so we're clear, I'm not into that. Uh-huh. Well, not everything piques my interest. Your circumstances simply do not. If you're not interested, then so be it. But is there any particular reason why? Hard to say. Perhaps because a sword is the only thing you're able to manifest? Strictly speaking, I suppose your power does raise some questions. But that sinister weapon of yours, it just doesn't leave me all that interested in learning more. Sinister, huh? That's one way to describe it. Tell me, have you ever beheld one of the hero's relics? They also possess the most peculiar aura. And yet, there's something almost divine about the terror they instill. But your sword? It's cold. Maybe even inhuman. In more complex terms, it's little more than an inorganic, dispassionate construct. Not a hint of the goddess's divine guidance in its design. It's not as if you were able to choose what you manifested, right? It just came to you. True. But what if I could turn it into something else and start manifesting different things? Would you be interested then? Is such a thing possible? I would like to see that for myself, I must admit. In fact, I'd be quite excited by that. What a fascinating topic to lay at my feet. Hold your horses there. I'm not really sure I've laid anything anywhere just yet. But aren't you the one who brought it up? Wow, that was amazing! No wonder Edelgard trusts you so much. Oh, hey, Kaspar. You weren't so bad out there yourself. Not that I'm surprised. You must make House Burglies proud. Tone I wish. I'm still pretty steamed about how the last battle went. I can't even outshine you right now, let alone my father. Ugh, it really burns me up. You think? I don't know much about your dad, but I'd say you're on par with me at least. Maybe even better. Sheesh! Sore winner much? Just you wait though, I'm only getting started. Old Caspar here's gonna upstage you once and for all, and I'm gonna do it for me. Okay, but think about it. I'm a mercenary and you're a noble. I'll have way more chances than you to excel in battle, which also means way more chances to die. Meanwhile, your dad's the Minister of Military Affairs. You falling in combat definitely wouldn't be a good look. You've got that all wrong. Since I'm his second son, I'm completely expendable as far as he's concerned. Ever since I was born, me and my brother were treated completely different. I don't have a shot at being the heir. Which means the only way I'm getting ahead in life is by proving myself in battle. I mean, I guess I could always go into politics or education or something. The point is, whatever I want to do, I've got to climb up from the bottom to do it. And the climb I picked means building a name for myself on the battlefield, no matter the risks. <laughs> it's almost like you're a mercenary. I never thought a noble could have that kind of motivation. You're a lot more inspiring than you give yourself credit for, Caspar. <laughs> it's nothing. I mean, I've still got the Burbley's name to lean on and all, so I'm better off than just any old Merc. Right. I guess I'm starting to get why you're so competitive with me now. But you should know, I'm not the kind of girl to back down from a challenge. 
I've been honing my craft as a mercenary for as long as I can remember, even since I was a kid. So you can train till your muscles give out if you want. Some noble brat's not gonna beat me. Oh yeah? Fine. I know I'm not gonna catch up to you overnight. But it'll happen someday. Just you wait. Yeah, and watch your back out there, okay? Hey, you loud and clear, boss. <laughs> sure glad I got you in my corner. Now then, just gotta... Oh. What are you hiding back there for, Bernadetta? I, um... Who was that guy you were just talking to? <laughs> that? Just a merc buddy of mine, asking if I had any jobs for him. Oh, he was a mercenary? But, but he looked like a bandit! Hey, come on now. You shouldn't assume the guy's a common criminal just because he looks rough around the edges. But, but, what about the way he talked? Oh, so scary! You'd sound like that too if you'd been a merc your whole life. Most of these guys didn't have a mom teaching them how to sound nice and proper like I did. Um, I see. I guess I don't really know you that well, but... Are all your friends like that? Is that too nosy? That's really nosy, huh? I mean, not all of them. Now that I think about it, it's kind of impossible to avoid in that line of work. Guess that means you won't be signing up for merc jobs anytime soon, huh? Obviously not! No, 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 no way, not happening! Even if I wasn't as shy as I am, I'd never be able to handle all those scary people at once! That sounds like your anxiety talking. You'd see there's nothing to be afraid of if you just gave them a fair shot. And hey, isn't basing your opinion of strangers on their appearance just gonna make you feel worse? Uh, well, what else am I supposed to base my opinion on? Just spend some time with them. If you ask me, the best place to judge someone's character is either on the battlefield or over the dinner table. I already told you I can't! Not me! Nope! Please, I need you to understand! I really don't get it. Is his appearance the only thing that's making you distrust him? There are plenty of guys out there who look just like that but have a heart of solid gold. Nicest folks you'll ever meet. By the same token, there are some real horrible people who cover it up with niceties and honeyed words. The kind of people who prey on others. My point is, judging a book by its cover will only get you in trouble. Trust me, you can't always tell who's good and who's bad from looks alone. Why are you trying to scare me? Nobody's tricking the iron heart of Bernie! Not today, not ever! Well, um, probably. Maybe. I'll be fine, I swear. Opera company smack dab in the middle of the Imperial capital, huh? I can't even begin to imagine what that must be like. I mean, I've been all over the place for my mercenary work, but it's mostly just been for small-time rural lords and the like. Honestly, I'd never even met anyone from the big cities like Enbar or Ferdiad before coming to Garrig Mach. Even after I ended up in the capital, all the glitz and glamour made me feel almost like I was living someone else's life instead of my own. You know, shows in the capital are about a thousand times flashier than the little town festival shows you might be used to. Every important moment of the drama is conveyed through elaborate song, and at the center of the musical ensemble stands its star, the diva. I think I get the idea. These divas sound pretty incredible. They probably get stage names and everything if they're that important, huh? Oh, but of course. I was known as the Mystical Songstress. Hey, that's pretty good. 
There always has been this kind of indescribable aura surrounding you. Thanks, but I have mixed feelings about the name myself. They called me that because of how suddenly a street orphan like me was discovered and debuted. Yeah, I see how there could be some complicated feelings wrapped up in that. But if you were able to rise from that to D.Va, you must have the chops to back it up. Not that I can even picture what that would sound like. Hey, do you think you could sing something for me? Uh, since you asked so nicely, but I'm only doing it this once, okay? How the crimson rain of pain it came, falling hard upon a land of flame, when the sacred blade it split the sky until the heavens heard our cry. In the hour of vengeance, will you heed the call? On the red fields of revenge, will you help avenge? We must fight strong and stand tall! Well, what did you think? It was... Uh, yeah. What, you didn't like it? Not quite the booming applause I'm used to. No, it was incredible, honest. It's just, I'm not really sure I got it, you know? I mean, the only songs I know are the ones sung by mercs in taverns or village girls as they tend the fields. You're kind of in a different league, Dorothea. Sorry I can't really give you much more than that. Oh, don't worry about it. This sort of thing happens more often than you think. Well, as long as you're not mad. If you don't mind, though, maybe you could try again for me sometime? I'd really like to hear you sing some more. And hey, I might even get better at telling you what I thought. <laughs> sure. I suppose I can give you one more chance. Hey there, Petra. Off to train? I'll join you. That would give me much joy. An opponent with toughness will keep me upon my toes. You mean me? Nah, you're way tougher than I am. Also, aren't you a queen now? I didn't realize Dawn to Dusk training was part of the Bridget Royal Regimen. I have not become queen yet. But there is an understanding that it will happen. And yes, in Bridget, royalty must have knowledge of fighting. I mean... We must know how to fight. To be leading our people, a ruler must have more strength than any other. They must be the hardest to kill. My people are expecting this of me. So it's the toughest person calling the shots, huh? I love it. What could possibly go wrong? This is how it is meant to be working. But such things do not always go with smoothness. Mercenaries are always seeking strength, too, correct? That's true. A merc lives and dies by the sword. If you're not better than the next opponent you face, they'll be the last one you face. Yes, dying is without productivity. But it gives me surprise that you do not avoid jobs of danger. A queen must be facing any wolf who comes to her door. But you can have pickiness when selecting fights. Depends on how much food you can put on the table that week. Most of us mercs barely scrape by hand to mouth. End of the day, it's just business. Some mercs will take the coin and blow town, and some employers are more than happy to hang us all out to dry. I guess you don't have a lot of cell swords in Bridget, huh? Correct. We do not require the selling of swords. In Bridget, everyone is a hunter. Everyone is a fisher. Everyone is a warrior. There is no need to be hiring, or to be hired. That sounds incredible. In a place like that, nobody'd have to risk their life just to get a bite to eat. Your words give me great happiness. I will always be full of pride for Bridget. Monica, why are you just standing there? 
I was waiting for you. You were speaking with Her Majesty, yes? Yep, just going over some strategy. Why, did you need me for something? No, not exactly. So, what did Her Majesty say? Well, she wanted to get my opinion on how best to utilize our mercenaries since they all use different weapons. We're gonna be fighting some upcoming battles on terrain that'll make it harder to use lances, so we were trying to figure out how to deal with that. And you didn't speak of anything else? Well, yeah, but it probably wouldn't interest you. Mercenary stuff, you know. That's not quite what I meant. There was cake for everyone, was there not? And I'm pretty certain there were fresh flowers throughout the room. Did you not see them? Oh, yeah, that cake was great. Did you want a piece? Flowers, though... Hmm... I think maybe there were some little white ones? Ugh, I have no interest in your opinion. I want to know what Her Majesty thought of them. Why do you want to know so badly? Can't you just ask Edelgard? You never know if a person is giving you their honest opinion when you spring a question on them. I just want to know what Her Majesty genuinely thought. I can't help you there, I'm afraid. I wasn't really paying attention. You were summoned by Her Majesty and granted the honor of giving her counsel. Then, she graciously offered you cake. And you didn't even have the decency to watch her eat it? Honestly, what is wrong with you? Sorry if I let you down somehow. I don't think I really get what the big deal is, though. Want me to go ask her right now? No, please don't. If Her Majesty learns I was prying about such things... <clears throat> I do not want to bother her with these trivialities. Forget I said anything. I see what's going on here. The cake and flowers were your doing, weren't they? That's why you were asking me about how Edelgard reacted. Yes, okay? Just please, not another word of this. Alright, I get it. Well, not really, but... I beg you, forget this ever happened. The situation is far more complicated than you realize. Hey, Manuela. Hmm, she must be out. Did I hear something? Oh, wait, is she sleeping in one of the patient beds? Oh, you. So silly. <laughs> she's smiling. I wonder what she's dreaming about. Wait, don't go. So you're just gonna leave? Uh-oh, now she's scowling. Looks like things are going downhill fast. Get back here! You'll regret this! You hear me? I'll never forget! <gasps> Morning, Manuela. Oh my, I don't even remember falling asleep. I don't suppose I was talking in my sleep, was I? You said something about someone leaving, like, don't go. Yeah, that's what happened in the dream. I thought I'd found the one. But in the end, he cast me aside. Just thinking about it makes me furious. How is it that even in my dreams I am hopelessly single? Oh, I, uh, I need a, a moment. Are you okay? I'm sorry, but... Uh, could I uh, trouble you for a glass of water? Phew, 
That is much better. Thank you. You got it. But, uh, it smells like you've been swimming in booze. Are you hungover? I might be. Is that a problem? Well, I don't think the infirmary is supposed to look like a bear charged through here. That seems like a problem to me. Back off, will you? You're the one who trounced in here unannounced and eavesdropped on my private, if humiliating, sleep talking. And now you're attacking me for a tiny hangover in a messy room? Who do you think you are, my mother-in-law? What? No. But as your friend and comrade, I can't not say anything. I know, you're right. I'm sorry. I tend to fly off the handle when I'm embarrassed. Hey, can I ask you for one teensy favor? You want me to pretend like none of this ever happened, right? Don't worry, I won't tell a soul. You're a class act. Thank you. Well, I don't want everyone to think worse of me than they already do. I mean, honestly, where did it all go wrong? Did you know I was once a diva with the Middle Franc Opera Company? But now, apparently I'm just a shadow of my former self. Can you believe how rude that is? Why would you kick a girl when she's down? What? But I didn't... How about this? In lieu of hush money for our little secret, perhaps I'll let you hear me sing next time. I'll show you that this diva's just as dazzling as ever. Now you have something to look forward to. Anyway, did you need something? Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm sure I had a reason to come in here, but now I don't have the slightest idea why. Ah, Ferdinand. I hadn't realized you'd return to the palace. Yes, here I am. Not that I have official business like you. Then why come such a long way? Ah, oh, I see. You're here to visit your father. I am ashamed to say this was my first time seeing him in his cell. My father insisted I stay away for my own safety. Though I must confess, the dungeon was not the horrid place I had imagined it to be. I was envisioning, you know, fiery hot pokers, spikes, and that manner of thing. Oh. Then it may interest you to know that we do actually have such a dungeon. I've only seen it once myself. It's further down from where we're keeping the former duke. It's a dismal place. One where rats scurry to and fro. Rats? I do not imagine father would cope well with that at all. While he did look haggard, it sounds as though his treatment could be far, far worse. We're doing our best to keep him in good health. The rest will depend on his frame of mind. Well, you will hear no complaints from me. I care only that he is kept alive and given a fair trial, and that his punishment fits the crime, of course. You'd better speed things along then, because Hubert is quickly losing patience. A fact of which I am very well aware. The problem is that I remain unable to connect my father to many of the acts he is accused of. Perhaps you're wasting your time. A noble as powerful as your father could easily have documents forged and witnesses bought off. Any records that remain will be considered far too dubious to prove guilt or innocence. Another fact I am very much aware of. In truth, I already found proof some time ago. Proof of his corruption, that is. I discovered it while looking through his tax records. When I realized what he had done, I was ready to serve him up to the authorities myself. 
Your own father? I'm surprised to hear you say that. I mean it. I thought I could carefully build a solid case against him while studying at the Academy. However, you had him clapped in irons before I could have my case organized. <laughs> now there is a bit of comedy. I idolized my father ever since I was a child. Yet I had to push those feelings aside in order to muster the anger to punish him. Now I find myself trapped between both of those emotions with no resolution in sight. I see. And tell me, is that the end of your story? I thought you were going to become Prime Minister, keep me in line, surpass me even. Oh, uh, well, I did not mean... You can still share words with your father and see him punished for his crimes, you know. So, if you desire resolution, start resolving matters. It's never too late. Now here's a rare sight. Since when do you read tactics manuals? Do you miss your days at the Officer's Academy? There's nothing to miss. No, because I seem to recall everyone being in awe of their incredibly talented combat professor. I had big plans for you after you were assigned to us, but then the Academy was forced to close its doors. Still, you played a small but critical role. Still not one for conversation, I see. Even so, I feel I understand you and your thoughts more now than when we first met. You see, that silence of yours just said, I don't need you to know me. Such a typical Emil thing to say. <laughs> don't call me that. Why? Because Emil von Bartels is dead? Because he was already hunted down and killed for slaughtering everyone in his house? He should have been. Is that so? Well, I disagree. This is why you live on as Yaritza von Prim, and why you remain in good standing with a house that will one day be yours. This is why the world has the Death Knight. For my goals to be achieved, both men are indispensable. You're greedy to desire that monster's power. His thirst is endless. Every soul he takes makes him less human. If so, I'd say the Death Knight is the greedy one. I must watch my step, lest he and his sight come for me in the night. You are my master, for now. You let the Death Knight hunt. I am grateful. Your life is safe. There's nothing to be grateful for. This is, and has always been, a contract that sees to both our needs. It just so happens I like having you and the Death Knight in my corner. Another clear victory for the Empire in battle. You can surely guess who stole the show yet again. Our mercenary friend? Always a force upon the battlefield, that one. Their approach on the battlefield is exceptional. Yet their curious power has also proved quite the boon. It is deeply fascinating, isn't it? Something beyond the principles of magic, and yet different from the power of crests. I might go so far as to say it veers close to the realm of dark magic, but I fear that's beyond my expertise. I am possessed of some small knowledge, yet still fail to understand the nature of that power. Then at present we can do nothing but throw our hands to the sky. And with that, 
I must be off. Oh? I thought you would be more curious about our mercenary ally. Would you truly raise the white flag merely because the matter lies outside your usual ken? What are you playing at, Hubert? If you want me to investigate a specimen, go ahead. Hook it and reel it in. Aha, but you are the better angler of the two of us. Furthermore, my method of hooking would complicate our relationship with so valued an ally. An inducement from your lips would ensure things proceed more smoothly. Well, this is becoming a hassle. Can't you push yourself to learn some new hooking strategies? Like, I don't know, one befitting the elegance of a true nobleman? Involving fancy tea, perhaps? A positively hair-raising notion. Please, do not speak it aloud again. Then maybe get in their face and pick a fight with them. You two could end up becoming fast friends. So you wish me to shout myself hoarse and swing my fists about like a common ruffian? I shall pretend I did not hear that suggestion. No. Then the only option left is aggressive persuasion, driven home at the point of an axe, let's say. Linhart, who in the world are you talking about right now? I should think there is no one quite so barbarous in our own army. Hmm? Oh, I didn't have anyone particular in mind. I was just brainstorming new methods to ensnare our illustrious mercenary friend. Why? Did they remind you of acquaintances of ours? <sighs> In any event, let us leave this sleeping dog where it lies. I do not dislike conversing with you, but we seem to procure results of little benefit when we do. And with that, I have matters to attend to and must be off. Farewell. Until next time, Hubert. So when can I expect you to have reeled in our mercenary friend? I suspect we'd make headway on the research if we engaged in it together. I'm afraid I've not the time to play along with your capricious whims, Linhart. I will, of course, be cheering you on with some enthusiasm from the shadows as you hook the subject yourself. <laughs> ah, Bernadetta. I see the documents I was waiting for have finally arrived. <laughs> Hubert! I'm not doing anything bad! Then would you be so kind as to hand those over? They are addressed to me, after all. Oh, um, right. Edelgard asked me to bring them. Phew, that was heavy. What are all these documents anyway? Old records of bandit activity in this area that I need for my investigation. Hey, that reminds me. I heard we had a group of bandits cornered, but they sort of... got away. Yes. A most vexing development. It beggars belief that our troops prove unable to exterminate even these few stray vermin. <laughs> Wait, are you angry? Oh, I doubt it is worth raising my ire over. <sighs> That's good. Um, but you look like you're angry. Bernadetta. Are you aware of how your persistence often leads to the very outcome you wish to avoid? Uh, I mean, uh, yes? In any event, my mood is what it is because I must now locate a den of rats. I will need to research previous stomping grounds, then cross-reference the location of their old layers in order to work out where this new one might be. Wow, that sounds like a ton of work. Yes, 
But there is nothing for it. These craven rats will not re-emerge once they've burrowed into their nests. Hey, neat! I definitely understand the desire to burrow in somewhere and never come out. <sighs> uh, I mean, but when there are festivals and stuff, they might slip up and leave? Maybe? Possibly? I mean, everyone loves festivals. It Except when there are people around, which is usually the case. Somehow I suspect you would not emerge for even the most magnificent of carnivals. However, you and the rats may differ on that point. We do what now? Yes, of course. Unlike you, these thieves have no particular desire to live away from others. We have had them on the run for some time, which means they've not been able to earn coin through their usual underhanded work. Thus, if I were to prepare a place where they could cut a few easy purses, they might consider the spoils to be worth the risk. Um, okay. And the bait shall be a festival. Due to the war, we have not held a genuine festival for quite some time, after all. So even if we do not capture the rodents, and it merely brings much-needed succor to the people, I would still consider it a success. Well done, Bernadetta. You have come up with a splendid idea that eluded even myself. Why are you complimenting me out of nowhere? Are you plotting against me? Not particularly, no. Although I am thinking I will require your assistance in this matter from now on. No! Someone free poor Bernie from this torment! Oh, there you are, Hubert. I have been searching everywhere for you. And to what end? Has Her Majesty summoned me? Oh, she would never use me for a task like that. I just wanted to thank you, albeit reluctantly. I do not recall having done anything that would merit such a sincere display of gratitude. Well, you probably just saw it as part of your normal administrative duties. You fixed quite a big mistake in my last report before Her Majesty had the chance to look at it. I woke up in a panic when I realized what I had done. Imagine how mortified I was to see you'd already corrected everything. Ah, yes. I may have done something of the sort. As Her Majesty's loyal servant, it is my duty to pare down the number of unnecessary matters which wander across her desk. I must say, I was surprised to see you make such a foolish and obvious error. Have you truly grown so lax, even as you style yourself the greatest of our Emperor's retainers? I'm aware of the mistake I made, but I would never dream of calling myself something like that. Well, perhaps I said it once or twice in the heat of the moment, but I never actually meant it. If anyone is Her Majesty's best retainer, it's you. And without House Vestra's say-so, I could never become one of her servants. At present, I very much doubt you are fit to serve as Her Majesty's servant. Excuse me? It is true that I did not make a conscious choice to serve Her Majesty at first. Instead, I simply did it because my father decreed it must be so. But such bounds no longer define our relationship. I do not serve the Emperor. My loyalty is to Lady Edelgard and her alone. I stand with her in a manner that goes beyond the bounds of ruler and servant. Do you understand this? I want to be like that with Her Majesty as well. 
But I am only the child of a baron, so I don't have excuses to linger in the palace all the time. I have to return to my family's estate once I've fulfilled my duties for the day, and I get summoned back to our territory often. I am not like you. I cannot just be at her side unless I have a good reason to be there. Indeed. Hawk's territory is in the far west of the Empire. I surmise you have had to spend much of your time away from Enbar. Furthermore, you will be a Baron one day. Your duties will prevent you from dedicating yourself solely to Her Majesty. Exactly. Unlike you, I have an entire territory's worth of people to protect. But I still won't give up. Even from afar. No. Precisely because I'll be afar, there will be things I can do to protect Her Majesty. In fact, always being at her side might actually cause you to overlook threats from time to time. I may even serve Her Majesty in a way you never could. <laughs> that is a promising thought, Monica. Hmm. Yes, that looks right. Why, hello, Linhart. It is not often I find you drawing outside. I'm not drawing. I'm simply trying to capture this wyvern's form. See? It's resting on that hill over there. Ah, an extraordinary sight indeed. Now then, let us see what you have done so far. I must say, it feels as though something is lacking in your work. Uh, how can I describe it? Your depiction is almost too accurate. Uh, take these scales, for example. Why, they could have been plucked from the very wyvern itself. I told you this isn't art. I'm doing it for my research. And when conducting research, it's always best to have precise references. The same is true when dealing with numbers or gathering information. I see. So you value accuracy above all else. Right. Honestly, I've never quite understood art anyway. So I'm perfectly content leaving that sort of thing to the true creatives. You know, the quirky ones. People like Bernadetta. Even so, there may come a day when your work is seen as the craft of a master artisan. When such precision is lauded as the height of aesthetic genius. What makes you say that? Oh, merely a passing thought. Perhaps in the distant future, connoisseurs will value accuracy and attention to detail over the magnificent interpretive pieces we hold dear today. Do you really think that'll happen, though? I doubt people will ever stop appreciating the ancient classics. You certainly have always done so. Yes, there is no denying that. But I fear my own personal inclinations hold little sway over public opinion. Nobody knows what trends may arise in the decades and centuries to come. So I can indeed envision a future in which accurate depictions are praised just the same as the greats of old. And I encourage you to do the same, my friend. I don't get it. How are you so optimistic all the time? It's like you're constantly looking toward the future. I could say quite the same about you. I have always believed you to be rather forward-thinking. That's not optimism, though. All I'm thinking forward to is the time when I can just sleep the days away. That's why I'm forcing myself to be as active as I can now. Regrettably, those halcyon days of slumber are still but a distant dream. I have much work for you, both now and further down the road. To begin with, might I ask you to paint my portrait? For the last time, I'm a researcher, not an artist. Are you sure you want such a faithful depiction? That is exactly what I want. How else would my yet unborn descendants know the true visage of the great Ferdinand von Eyre? Indeed, I would be proud to submit myself as a subject of your research. 
Consider it a study in the personification of nobility itself. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. I'm fine drawing you, but I don't have the slightest modicum of interest in actually researching you. Though, I do sometimes wonder where you get all that unabashed confidence from. Hmm. Well, Bernie, you were nothing but trouble for everybody, yet again. <sighs> there you are. I was worried when you failed to appear at mealtime. Please do not tell me your hunger was so great that you resorted to eating those plants there. You should be careful. I have heard there is some rather poisonous flora in this area. Hey! I'm not going to eat poison! What kind of dummy do you think I am? I know exactly which plants are safe and which ones aren't. It is strange to see you this confident on a topic. But if you are so certain, I think I should give your eye a test. Just to be safe, you understand. We're doing what now? Ah, I know. What say we have a little game to see who can collect the most edible plants? What? And as an army can never have too much food, this will serve to benefit the others. <laughs> what a splendid idea! Oh, why me? Okay, so this one would cause stomach aches, and that one would be really bitter. Mm, I think. Oh, I don't know. I've only ever seen it in books. But hey, I'm sure it's fine. I'll also take this one, and this one, and this one. Wait, is that Ferdinand? Such luster, such size, such a gorgeous crimson! Yes, this looks like a scrumptious leaf indeed. Ah, and there are bulbs under this tree! Rich white bulbs with the luster of a precious pearl! I see. You were frightened by a mouse scampering by and took a bit of a tumble when you fled, yes? Yeah, and I dropped all my beautiful plants that your dumb game made me don't collect! Never mind that now. Uh, show me your wound, please. Ah, uh, yes. Just a scrape. Still, we should return to base and treat it before it festers. I suppose. Thanks for looking at it. Wait, that leaf! The one you're carrying! This one? What of it? If you were hungry, we could snack on it while we walk back. No! No, no, no! That plant has medicinal properties. It's a styptic. Well, what luck. We can use it to treat your wound. Well, I must say, your talent for identifying plants is no idle boast. Yeah, I eyeballed them pretty well, huh? Now let's take a look at yours and... What? <laughs> Are you at a loss for words with the quality of the plants I gathered? What? But... the gorgeous leaf! The robust vine! Death in plant form! Throw them away before we die! <sighs> I'm tired. Time to find a good spot for a nap. <sighs> Bernadetta? Why are you skulking in the weeds? Getting in the way of two people's love at all, no sir! Huh? But I'm alone here. 
I see that. Yeah, that! I was out walking when I saw them. A man and a woman together in the woods getting... Um... Heated. Well, neither of them seems to be dead yet. They're on a secret date, you dummy! Not fighting! Regardless, how does two lovers stealing a moment alone lead to you curled up here in the fetal position? Because I'm hiding! I mean, if I messed up their date, they might try to get revenge on me! Relax. To them, you're no different than a pebble on the side of the road. Hey, I'm not a pebble! I mean, sure, sometimes I wish I was just a rock, but... Then just roll away quietly and you'll be fine. Just roll away quietly? Hey! Yeah! Wait, no! They'd see me! Stop trying to get me killed! We've made enough racket over here to raise the dead and they haven't even noticed. I think it's safe to say they're off in their own little world. Still, good for them. Sharing words of love when either one could die tomorrow. Wait, they could die tomorrow? They're both soldiers who serve on the front lines. I doubt a rosy future awaits them. No, that's not true! Couples swearing their love and defying destiny are a staple of classic fiction! Sure, but the fact it wouldn't happen in reality is what makes it such a good story, right? Well, wait, but there are tons of stories where two people who have sworn their love don't ever meet again. Likely because that's something people are familiar with from their own lives. Okay, so which is it? I believe those two can be happy together, so they can, right? I hope that's the case. But reality is cruel. <sighs> anyway, I've talked myself right to sleep. Huh? Come on, don't sleep there! <sighs> Uh-oh. Guess I'd better try that turn into a pebble and roll away quietly plan. And of course, I'm worried about those who struggle at combat. Yes, we must do all we can to support them. I'll do my part to watch out for those who need help. Thank you. We'll do this together. Support people who struggle with combat, huh? If there's a more perfect job for me out there, I don't know what it is. Um... You ready, Bernadetta? Let's go! No! Why do I have to do this? Why do you have to train, you mean? It's not training, it's weird! This is torture and I'm gonna die! Hey, calm down. You'll only be fighting me. You're lying! There are people hiding in this armor and they're gonna attack me! That armor isn't big enough for a person to hide in. You don't know that! I could absolutely hide inside one! Uh, I mean, yeah, okay. You probably could. See? I was right! Wait, this isn't the time for me to worry about that! The fact you're plotting against me is the issue here! Why do you hate me?! Look, Edelgard said we need to help people who struggle with fighting, all right? I'm just trying to put that into action. Ah! You're gonna take me out with a surprise attack from the darkness! I know your game! And how would I attack you from the darkness when we're standing in the middle of the training grounds in broad daylight? You think all these people walking by would see me try to murder you or whatever and just keep going? No, 
They're watching me. I'm sure of it. Your armor is staring at me. Nope. That's it. I'm out of here. I'm going home to enjoy a life of freedom without my father. What? You can't just run out on me here, Bernadetta. I mean, trying to detect people hidden in suits of armor. That's one of my father's traditional training drills. I don't know any other way to do it. I don't need your lousy support, so just leave me alone! <sighs> Maybe I'm not cut out for this kind of thing. Hey, Kaspar. Oh, what's with the mountain of books? Wait, please don't tell me you're planning to use them in your training somehow. What kind of guy do you think I am? They're books. I'm gonna read them. Read? A book? You? Did you eat something weird? Come on, you sound just like Linhart. I've torn through books before. Sometimes even two or three whole chapters a day. Please don't use the word torn when it comes to books. You're going to make my heart stop. And books are divided into chapters, not chappers. Oh, Caspar, promise me you won't hurt those books. You don't have to worry, Dorothea. I realized something the other day. A person who's responsible for troops can't rely on physical strength alone. You probably wouldn't guess it from how my father looks, but he's pretty good about that stuff. Can't say I'm shocked that the Empire's Minister of Military Affairs has read the occasional book. Speaking of, you may have heard this story before, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Back during the War of the Eagle and Lion, there was an Imperial General named Francis who was quite proud of his strength. But while he was indeed strong, he was unlearned, and so everyone looked down on him. Why do I feel like this story is going to make me feel like an idiot? Just listen. The Emperor at the time gave Francis an order to study, and said that if he didn't, he wouldn't be allowed to lead anyone in battle. Francis did as his emperor ordered, and studied as though his life depended on it, growing especially talented in the area of tactics and strategy. As a result, his deeds on the battlefield were great, and he eventually rose to the rank of Minister of Military Affairs. So I should take a page out of Francis's book, right? So long as you don't mean literally, yes. Incidentally, the words the Emperor used to praise Francis were memorable enough to have survived even to this day. With the passing of five sunrises and five sunsets, even the meanest soldier may burgeon into a peerless commander. It means if you study hard for five days, even a common soldier can become a great general who commands an entire army. Five days? That's nowhere near enough time. It'd take me five days just to read one book. You gotta at least give me until the end of the war. But by that point, won't your chances to distinguish yourself in battle have already passed? Oh, you're right. What am I gonna do, Dorothea? Well, I suppose I have no choice but to help you. Who knows? I might even learn something. You're the best! Thank you! And that's the situation. Now put your head down and see it done. Leave it to me! I can do this blindfolded! And don't neglect your night training. You'll be a wreck in the morning if you don't put the hours in. What kind of lazy jerk do you take me for? Of course I'd never skip my training. Very good. Well, I must be going. It seems you have a visitor anyway, so farewell. Wait, a visitor? Oh, hey, Petra. Sorry, were you waiting for me? What can I do for you? Uh, everything all right? You don't look so good. I am well. You have my thanks for your concern. You sure? I, I can walk you to the infirmary. I think Professor Manuela is in, actually. 
No, I am well. Do not be troubling yourself. If you say so. I do. Kaspar, I was not realizing that your father was visiting. Yeah, he dropped by to talk to Edelgard and some of the others. Guy's so busy he hardly stays in any one place for more than a few hours. I must be remembering that. Oh, you have some business with him? No, not yet. Hey, sorry, but did you need me for something? Huh? Oh, um, Edelgard is needing you. I was coming to tell you. She appeared quite upset. Her composure was almost lost. Wait, she's mad at me? Oh no, I totally forgot she wanted to see me! Thanks, Petra, you're a lifesaver! One day, I will be having revenge. Leopold von Burgles, you will be ruined the day you stole my father's life. Is that Lady Dorothea? Oh, it is! Hello, Monica. Oh, is something wrong? Well, I was wondering... Are you the same Lady Dorothea who is known as the Mystical Songstress? Well, yes, I suppose I am. Did you not know that? Not at first, though it made perfect sense once I finally realized it. I find it difficult to believe it's really you. Well, I'm certainly not doing a lot of songstressy things here in the army, so I'm not surprised it took you a bit to put two and two together. But it should not have taken me this long. You have the same name, and you carry yourself in the same dignified manner as the Lady Dorothea I saw in the capital. I can't believe you're right in front of me. The excitement is so great I can barely stand. Oh, please, that's all in the past. Now I'm just another one of your allies. No, you're different. There wasn't a girl in the capital who didn't want to be you. I spent years trying to find a ticket to one of your performances. But when I finally found one, I ended up in a seat where I couldn't see the stage very well. It was so far back, I could barely even make out your face. Or the rest of you, for that matter. That's likely why I failed to recognize you at first. Well, I'm certainly pleased you came to see me, and I'm sorry the seat was less than ideal. Oh, but the costumes and stagecraft were more gorgeous and stirring than I ever could have imagined. Your songs captivated me. They reached out from the center of the stage all the way back to me in my little corner of the opera house. Just thinking about it puts a smile on my face. <laughs> You were a more passionate listener than I would have imagined, Monica. Uh, Mommy? Still with me? Oh, my apologies, Lady Dorothea. I was sort of carried off by a wave of memories there. It's fine, but uh, can we maybe stop with all of the lady stuff? I find it a little unsettling. Well, all right. Dorothea? You know, I'm somewhat surprised you didn't return to the opera company once the war broke out. You're not the only one. Adie and I being classmates was a big part of why I stayed, but... Suffice it to say that a lot happened, and now I'm here. It's a great honor to fight alongside you, Lady Dor... Uh, um... Dorothea. Maybe I should just return the favor and start calling you Lady Monica. Well, if it isn't Yuritsa, what are you doing out here all by your lonesome? Come to think of it, you were always at the training grounds when we were at the Officers Academy, too. It was quiet there. You don't say. 
Personally, I prefer somewhere I can kick back with a nice drink. Speaking of which, we should get one together sometime. I'm sure Hanneman would spare a moment to join us. I don't drink. Too bad. I thought it would be a good chance for us to get to know each other. By the way, I've been wondering, why were you always hiding behind that mask? A waste of a perfectly handsome face, if you ask me. I like you much better this way. It's not worth discussion. Oh! From what I've heard, you're probably a good few years younger than me. Yet you're so mature. It's like you have this indescribable air of mystery. I bet there's some burning passion lurking beneath that icy exterior, longing for reprieve. I'm right, aren't I? It's in there somewhere, I just know it. Say, let's grab some drinks tonight and do nothing with them because you don't like to drink. I know, why don't we go out dancing instead? I could not reveal my face. And then, when the sun rises, we can... Oh, what was that about your face? Why you hide it? Why do you hide it? Some knew me to be a wanted criminal. I find that hard to believe. Like they say, there are two sides to every story, right? But what made you want to tell me? A moment ago, you blew me off with that broody, none-of-your-business routine. You would have kept talking if I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Did I say something strange? Sorry, I wasn't trying to tease. I just think you're cute when you're flustered. Uh, uh. You've become quite the ladies' man. Just you wait. I don't give up that easily.